I'm going to invite you just to bow your heads with me. <clears throat> and we're going to ask the Lord just to, just to guide us. Father, thank you. This is a special time. A time when we get to, as a church, come together and to reflect upon the amazing gift that you blessed humanity with. The life of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. We're here today because our hearts are filled each and every Sabbath with, with this great joy to just come and worship you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we're here this, mor this morning and afternoon, Father, just to, just to consider the magnitude of the sacrifice that you have blessed us with. And may we not only may we not only hear your words this morning, but may we be changed by them. May we become more like Jesus, our Savior. May we give up all that we are, all that we have done, and lay it on him, and have him wash and cleanse us again anew. So bless your word today. Be with the speaker. Be with, the, with all those who are here today as well. And may you get all the glory, honor, and praise for what you're about to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And amen. Welcome to those who are visiting, by the way, with us today, and those who are visiting with us online as well. Glad to have you. Today we, today we take a, a look at this amazing topic, the Last Supper. And the thought I want you to keep in mind is these two words. Remember me. Can you remember those two words? Remember me. No, not me now, but remember who? Christ, correct? All right, so turn in your scriptures to, to 1 Corinthians. Join me there, 1 Corinthians. Let me see you here. Chapter 11. Now I'm going to read from verse 23. 1 Corinthians chapter what? And verse 23. For I received from the Lord, Paul said, that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he did what to the bread? He broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of? Remember me. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of. And then finally, for as often as you drink, for as often as you eat, sorry, this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's what? Death until he comes. I love how one brother puts it. He said, Leonardo da Vinci painted the Last Supper scene on a dining room wall in Milan. As a visitor stood viewing the finished work, he commented how the realism of several goblets, those glasses, several of those goblets on the table, exclaiming that they were so real 
to him and he felt as though he could reach out and touch it and pick them up. It was so clear on the picture. Upon hearing those words, Da Vinci quickly grabbed a brush and painted over those goblets. So there was no goblets to see anymore. Why? When they asked Da Vinci, why would he do that? Da Vinci pointed to Jesus and said, it is his face. It is his face. It's Jesus' face that I want them to see. When we sit around the table today, and when we think about communion and the Last Supper, it's not the procession that goes on before and during. Are you with me? It's not all the liturgy that goes on throughout the service that is of main importance. What is of main importance in every Last Supper service is that we come to meet Jesus. We come to see him face to face, amen? We come to revive our relationship with him. We come for a cleansing and a renewal, amen? That is what is important. Remembering Jesus personally and what he has done. There's three things here we see right here in the scripture, and I won't spend too long on them, more than to just mention them and look at them briefly. But as you go through, as you went through the scriptures with me, you see there, Jesus first was saying, I mean, Paul was first saying, remember Jesus' suffering. All right? Go back to the text. 1 Corinthians what? 11. And I'm going to read verse 23 there. Corinthians chapter 11. Uh, it says, for I have received from the what? From the Lord, which I also deliver to you, that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on that same night in which he was what? Betrayed. Betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he did what? He broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body. In other words, what, what Paul is saying here, when Paul says, Jesus said, take, eat, this is my body, He's saying, this is my broken body. Because before his body was broken, correct? Now he's saying, take, eat my body. So eat my what? My broken body. As you look on the cross there, and even before the cross, you can tell the pain that Jesus went through during those experiences. You can tell in many ways in which how it said he was betrayed, but they spat upon him. They stripped him naked. Our Lord was stripped naked there on the cross. They treat him so poorly. They, 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 they pierced him. They, they did all manner of things to Jesus' body. He was suffering for real on that cross. Did he have to? Didn't have to suffer, right? In fact, just one little whisper. He could have called 12,000 to come and rescue him easily. But he chose. He chose to go through that suffering and shame. Why? Why? For us. You know, sin has a way of causing us to feel guilt and shame in this life, right? Sin has a way of really causing harm to us in this life. Isn't that true? And in fact, sin has a way, if we allow it to stick around, it has a way of weakening our lives so much that we have no control over it. And Jesus here is saying, my body was broken so that you don't have to experience, are you with me, all the weight of sin in your world today. If you would only remember that I am your secret power. Hallelujah. Amen. That's, what, that's what he's trying to say. He's trying to say, if you'd only remember, if I'd only remember that when I, when I come into a person's life, Jesus is saying, I not only bring forgiveness, but I bring power over sin. 
I bring a certain power that sometimes you might think you will never get over this bad thing. But I have the right power for that if you only trust me. And I've endured so much for you. You don't have to endure all of that if you don't reach out and trust me. There's a power that comes with believing in Jesus. Y'all know that, right? Amen. I'm sure if I allow some of you to testify right now, you would say some amazing things to Jesus. I found Jesus pulled you out of a, of a certain spot in life where you were going through some weaknesses and, and some, some failings, but now they're behind you. Hallelujah! Amen. All because of who? Jesus. All because of Jesus. You know, if, if David could have pulled through his mess, how much more can we pull through with Jesus? Amen? And so, sure enough, to many in this world today, Christianity might seem to be powerless. But I want to say right here in Garland Church that we have nothing to be shamed about. Amen. Because there's power in, the, in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There is. I can tell you about that. Because I know what he has done for me. And so Jesus is saying there's no more reason for any human being to go through this life without the power to overcome sin. My body has been broken for you. I've taken all that the devil could have done to one human being. I've taken it all on myself so that you might not endure it. What a power. What a power Jesus is. The body, when we take that bread today, just remember, that bread represents not only the body of Jesus, but the broken body of Christ. Are you with me? Amen. All right. Not only do we remember his suffering, but we've got to remember his death. And in remember his, his death, we are actually focusing on the blood. You know, human beings or animals can't live without the blood flowing through their bodies, correct? So if there's no blood, there's no life. Wouldn't you say? And sure enough, when we come to the table, we consider the death of Christ. We remember what he went through and what he faced. Now, many people think that when Christ died, that some people say, you know, Pastor, uh, he went to hell right after, you know, and preached to a lot of prisoners there in hell. Um, the truth is, in the Bible, we all know that Jesus didn't even go to heaven right away. Come on, y'all. So some people say, hey, listen, he, he was in hell, and some people put him in heaven right away after the cross. But we know that it wasn't until the, the Sunday morning that he had to tell Mary, listen, don't touch me yet, because I haven't gone to my father as yet. I'm about to, right? Amen. But I haven't gone yet. And he's saying something right there, Elder Small. He's saying something powerful there because what he's saying is if he died on Friday and if he went to heaven on Sunday, then on Sabbath he was dead. Christ Jesus died for our sins. You know what the Bible says all over? That means on Sabbath morning, you know, one of the, one of the really bad things about, about Easter is that you only hear about Good, Fr Fr yeah, Good Friday and Easter Sunday. No one talks about the Sabbath. But that is so powerful. It's as powerful as the resurrection or the crucifixion. You can't not talk about that. When we remember Christ, Remembering what he suffered for us. And he suffered our death. Do you know what our death is? How the Bible describes our death? The wages of sin is what? A temporary death? Eternal death. The only, the only punishment for sin 
is something eternal. Our death is not uh, uh, just something when we die. You know, I mean, folks say when people die, they go immediately to heaven. That's not even a, that's not even a scriptural uh, fact. When people die, they wait for the resurrection. Is that true? So Jesus, he was doing just that. He was awaiting for the resurrection on Sabbath. Sleeping, right? That's why Paul many times will say, and you can go to Galatians 1 verse 1, you'll find it there, he was raised by the glorious power of the Father. Are you with me? So he was dead, sleeping, waiting for his father to do what? And sure enough, his father raised him. So which death was he facing there on Sabbath morning? Our death, our eternal death. It's called the second death in the Bible. The second death, there's no more resurrection after that. And that's what we deserve. But someone tasted it for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus tasted the second death for us. You see, a Christian will die in a Christian can die before Jesus comes back. But they're simply dying the first death. That means there's a resurrection after that death. I hope if any of you here or myself, if we should die before Jesus comes back, I hope we die the first death. Are you with me? Because Jesus died the death he wanted no one to taste. He took it upon himself. Hallelujah. So when we remember Christ, we got to remember what he did for us. He suffered for us, but he died the second death, the eternal death for us. What a God. He and God choose to go through all of that. Amazing. And finally, when we come to the Lord's table, not only do we remember Christ's suffering, not only do we reflect upon the death that he died for us, but we also reflect upon the thought that he's coming back again. Yeah. It's right there in the text, isn't it? Well, let's read it again. Verse 26. For as often as you what? Eat this what? Bread and drink this cup. You proclaim the what? The Lord's death till he what? So every time we do this together here at Garland, we are also looking forward to the soon coming of our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Because he never just stayed in the grave on Sabbath. He came up on Sunday morning. Amen. And then he went to heaven. Hallelujah. And he said he's coming back again. Jesus is coming back again. And let me just say to my friends, those who are watching and those who are here, if your life is not given completely over to God, don't, wait, don't think that you have time to wait on his second coming. Do you know when is our actual, you know when is our second coming of Jesus? Anytime a person dies, that's it. If they die sleeping in Christ, the next thing they'll hear, the next person they'll see, is Jesus coming back, right? Oh, y'all. Yeah. So that's like the second coming right there at, at death. Because the next thing you're going to see is your Lord and Savior. When he's coming back the second time. Isn't that true? Yeah. But listen, folk. If we play the game like Laodicea in the Bible, where we sit on the fence, one foot in the church and one foot in the world, and, and do that week after week with no change. God looked upon that scene in the book of Revelation and said, there's no other thing that I can despise than that kind of life. He said, I don't like it so much, it makes me want to puke. Are you with me? It's either you're with me 100% or just go and live the life of the world. But don't think that I'll be so much um, just 
waiting and waiting around on you when you have the decision that you can make for Christ fully right now. Are you with me? Amen. It's like being in a marriage relationship. Things are going on bad inside the home. The spouse is looking at another person. And the other spouses are simply waiting for that spouse to change. Just waiting. As if, as if life doesn't have circumstances that can happen immediately. Are you with me? As if everything is going to be all right, I just can do whatever I want to do. Do the said in the book of Jeremiah. Hey, listen, I don't have to think about the judgments of God anymore. God will act nice to me at all times. Are you with me? He will never, ever judge me. Well, you know the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says, and I'll close with this, for God so loved the world that he gave his what? That whosoever believeth in him shall not what? So those who do not believe will what? So as we come to the table, we come also making some serious decisions with our Lord. Lord, I'm weak to this thing, but I need your help. Hallelujah, right? I'm suffering with this addiction, but I need your help. I want to be true to you in the church and true to you at home. Are you with me? And so, Lord, I'm coming to you right now asking that you would supply the power needed to make me an authentic Christian. Without you, I cannot. Is that where you are, church family? Anyone here today? Praise the Lord. I know that's where I am right now as I come to the table. And so with that, I'm going to invite you just to stand. Just to stand with me. The beauty of the communion table is the reflection that Jesus provides forgiveness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He provides forgiveness. Anybody need the forgiveness of God today? Anyone? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's speak to him. Father, thank you. You're such a good God. You, you amaze us with your patience and your love. Father, you, you know just how to meet our needs. You brought us to church today because you knew that we would need this word today. And so, Father, we come confessing our hearts to you. We come saying, Father, that you would just wipe that blood all over our lives, the blood of Jesus. And wash away, Father, all of our sins. And, and give us, Father, give us a, a new start today. Give us this opportunity to, to embrace you in such a powerful way by, by just embracing all that you have done for us through our Savior, Jesus Christ. As you forgive, as you wash, as you cleanse, I pray, Father, that you'll also fill us with the Holy Spirit. And help us each and every day to renounce all the semblance of sin and choose to live for you wholeheartedly. Father, I pray that you burn within our hearts that blessed hope, hope that gives us confidence in, 
and, and give us peace in grief. That hope that, that, that makes us understand that this world is not only what is there for, for the Christian. But there's a home that you have gone to prepare for us. Father, may that fill and occupy every space of our minds. So, so that each and every day will be a day where we're closer to the coming of Jesus. Bless our time today, Father. Bless each and every person here in the sanctuary, those who are watching online. And may we, ever, may we experience in its fullness what it means to remember Jesus. Bless us now, we pray. And thank you for hearing our prayers. We ask in Jesus' precious name, the church of the living God say, Amen. Amen.